weekend. Now it is, of course, the 4th of July, the day when Americans celebrate their independence from us. But to show them there's no hard feelings, we're joined tonight by an American legend. Yeah, his 100 albums have been loved throughout the world, but for him there really is no place like home. Tony Bennett. Yeah. So what would you be doing if you weren't obviously with us here? At the well, I'd be watching fireworks from the, my window, which overlooks Central Park. Oh, and they, they, they really do a big, but it's, it's, this is the best 4th of July I ever spent, right here. Right, just with, the, with a big screen and a few, <laughs> oh, big, big there we are. Of course there was a big ceremony in the U.S. today, wasn't there? Because they were unveiling this new statue of Ronald Reagan. Right. Been a I, I saw that this at our morning, embassy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it looks amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. There we are, yeah, it, it right looked, and, yeah, yeah. There, you could, there he is, the great man himself, and of course you, you, you've sung for him, haven't you? I mean, you've sung for 11 U.S. presidents. Yes, yeah. What was he like? Very, very, uh, very much a movie star. Uh -huh. He was very popular, you know, he was handsomer than anybody that would walk in the room, the, or the other politicians uh -huh. felt self-conscious, you know, he was so handsome, he... Well, and was it, was it up to you what, you what you sang for him, or do you have to sing the same song for all the American presidents? Excuse me? Did you, was it up to you what you decided to sing for him, or was it his choice? I don't know. They just uh, invited me, and I sang what I thought would be was proper. proper. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, but you've sung for 11 presidents altogether, haven't you, including Obama. So at what point in the presidency do they ask you to come in? Is it right at the beginning? Or, you know, a few months into the thing? Right, now we've got Tony great. Bennett to sing for us. Well, it's, it's always a great thrill, you know, you're traveling on the road and all of a sudden you get invited to the great capital in, in the United States and yeah. it's a great honor. Of course. Okay. Well, you've been going for 60 years, but you've got a brand new album out with a whole host of new artists and we'll talk yes. to you about that a bit later. Well, thank you. Looking forward to it now then. Uh, a report into how we as a society care for our elderly was released today. It suggests that the maximum anyone should pay for their old age care should be capped at around £35,000, irrespective of how well off they are. Yeah, but is it right that the taxpayer picks up the bill for people who have enough access to fund their own care? Do you think the government should pay for us in our old age, or do you think we should pay our own way? I wouldn't want to see our, yeah, our elderly relatives going uncared for, so I'd much rather pay a higher tax and not be able to pay for it myself. I think if they're earning more, they should be paying more. I mean, it's, it's the same with everything else. No, I don't see why care should be any different, really. Have you both heard about the new government proposal about yeah, elderly? Yeah, you have? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And what are your thoughts about it? Well, I think the government should pay for it, because oh. I've paid taxes and yeah. national health role model work in life. It depends what kind of care you want, but I think if you want something a bit nicer, then you should pay for yourself. But if you want like the one of the mill kind of standard care home, then I think it should be paid for by the government. Since everyone's sort of paying taxes towards the government, that yeah, I think it's fair that everyone should get the same treatment. If somebody's got a big pot of money, then I think maybe they should just go in and pay for themselves. If the rich people want a better elderly care, then they should pay extra for it. I think if you worked hard all your, all your life, then your children should be able to benefit from your wealth and not for you not to have to pay for your own health care, I think it's totally wrong. Well, Tony, just before we linked into that, uh, we were saying about your new album, which is going to be out, Duets 2. Right. And as the name suggests, you're obviously duetting, and there's some incredible people on there. You've got... I love what's there. happening, yeah. Yeah. Andrea We've travelled all over the world for them, you know. Andrea Bocelli and Pisa. So you went to Italy. them, as opposed yeah, to them we, coming to Yeah, you. we go to everywhere where they're, they're at. And, we, and, and it's wonderful. You know, I've been travelling... Uh -huh. uh, internationally, all over the world, doing this album. So and it's okay. like a new album and a holiday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a real sort of diverse range of people on there. How did you choose them, then, Tony? I, m I must tell you, I did the first album I did was very successful. It sold millions of records. So of course, uh, Sony Columbia is very excited about doing a second one. Uh -huh. But the younger artists on this album. I must uh, tell the public, if I may, that uh, they're in for a big surprise because I've never met so many young people Amy that Wyatt are so talented. Yeah. You know, they're very, very talented. Yeah. 
Now, I know when I first started, recently they're putting out a whole box set of everything I've ever recorded. Yeah. And I heard some of those first records. It's a miracle that I'm still on a record. <laughs> I, I can't, can't believe how, how much I've grown as a performer. Well, your first number one was six. It's just, it, 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 the, the records, it, it frightened me. I just yeah. said, was I singing like that? Yeah, yeah. And how, so how do you choose what songs to do then? Obviously, it kind of depends on the on the other person that you're singing with, the style well, of people. What makes a great duet? Mm, well, you know, fortunately, through the through each decade that I, I've performed, uh, I've had million selling records. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we chose those songs that are quite popular. Okay. Uh, that I've, and then, them, what I love is uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, how, how do you work a duet? Yeah. What makes it work? And it's the contrast of artists. The way from one from my from my voice to someone else. Now, usually the female voices are very good because you could tell who's singing what line. Yeah. Well, we've got yeah we've got a clip of you with K D Lang singing. Oh really? It's sent across the internet. Well, I haven't seen it. For yeah, that's great. Have a little look. It's just coming. <laughs> You know, I, I toured with, with Katie in, uh, in Australia, and I'll tell you, she is a showstopper. It was very tough to follow her, you know. Right. You know, no, but really, she's just a beautiful singer, and the public adores her. So it's, it's a wonderful uh, tour that we had in Australia. We spent a month there. Well, speaking of touring, you've done 200 concerts, over 200 concerts. You're 84. Right. How do you keep going, then? Any, any talk of retirement? Well, I have a wonderful wife that taught me to uh, stay in shape and uh, and just exercise three times a week and eat very good foods and have good uh, evenings where I sleep very well, you know, very rested. I don't have insomnia. So uh, I'm blessed with, the, with good health. Yeah. Well, a good and woman is always the key, honesty. Tony. Hmm? A good woman is always the key. Yeah. <laughs> and it's lovely to see a smile when you talk about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just a life, isn't it, really? Isn't it? Right, now then, very fortunate. Yeah, on we go. Now, according to uh, Scotland Yard, this year there's been a big rise in the number of break-ins and muggins blamed in part on people turning to crime in hard times. Yes, police across the country are having to fight the threat of rising crime with falling budgets. But as Tony Livesey finds out, the chief constable of Manchester says he has the answer. If All out in a month, that sounds pretty yeah. excessive. I suppose they have to respond to everyone because... Yeah. Yeah. You know, you never know. Well, it'll be interesting to see how those changes affect the frontline policing. Then. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, Matt and I were fascinated to read that you fought, of course, in World War II, but you were a big part of the liberation of a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. So when you look back at that time, Tony, what, what memories stick out for you then? Well, uh, I, I didn't like it. Mm. Uh, the war, you know, I think it's mm. the most inhuman thing that you could ever uh, experience. Mm. Yeah. It's. Uh, I just pray someday that we find a way to all accept one another and realize that we're on a very small planet in the universe yeah. and we're all here as uh, the great Ella Fitzgerald. She kept telling me over and over again, Tony, we're all here. Yeah, and yeah. It's true, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and when you look at it from space, you know, the, the astronaut went up and he looked down at the planet and he saw this little dot, which is the planet. And he said, I always thought I was an American citizen, but I realize I'm, an, I'm a, 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 a citizen of the world. Of the world yeah, yeah. And I guess you, you're past in the army, and that, that's really affected with all those things that you experienced. That's yeah, I, I, I didn't reason. like it but, at all. It was yeah. terrible. They didn't show up, you became great friends with Frank Sinatra. Right. I was very, uh, it happened very long ago. Uh, I was, they had, Perry Como, the great, late, great singer, had a, a very successful television show that everybody loved. And he allowed me to do his summer replacement in, in America. And when I got there, I realized they cut the budget, and whereas Perry Como had this big orchestra and the biggest stars like you have on your show. Uh -huh. but, <laughs> nice of you to say. <laughs> um, but you're one of I'm very honored to be here. <laughs> and, but I got very frightened. So I had never met Frank Sinatra, although he was 10 years older than I was, and right. I was a big fan of that yes. whole era of Ella Fitzgerald and Nat King Cole, and, but Sinatra was on top, you know. And yeah. He, and you, you were told not to sound like him, though, weren't you? 
Is that right? No, that's not true. That's not true. No, a, oh, a teacher no. told me that in, okay. in school. Uh, that I studied at the American Theater Wing yeah. uh, school, and I uh, said, don't imitate other singers because you'll be one of the chorus, you know. Yeah. Be yourself. Yeah. And imitate musicians rather than yeah. singers. So that that's how that went. Well, you've but anyway, yeah. I was very nervous, and I went I went up to uh, Mr. Sinatra. I asked to see him, and uh, I, I, I had my first million-selling record with Because of You, and uh, I went up to him, and uh, and he was nice enough to invite me to his dressing room, and he said, "What is it, son?" And I said, "Well." I said, I'm very nervous, and I don't know what to do. And he gave me such great advice. We hit it off like that, you know, because he said, you'll find out that the public, if you're nervous, the public will help you. They'll encourage you to go on. And he, he, made, he made me realize that uh, the, the, enemy, the, the public is not the enemy. They're my, they're my friends. Yeah. And it, it just psyched me out for the rest of my life that I, I, I don't mistrust an audience. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Brilliant. 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 Well, it is July, which means the start of the summer holidays. Yes. Indeed. And what better way uh, to start your summer than spend a whole week wildlife spotting with Mike and Miranda on a beach in the Isle of Sydney. Apart from Mike and Miranda, it would be a perfect holiday location. It's lovely, I've been there quite a I'm only times. joking, I'm only joking. <laughs> Gorgeous. Now then, Tony, part of your repertoire is songs from the Great American Songbook, and these are well-known songs um, from the 20s to 50s. So what is it about these songs that you love so much then? Well, uh, being an American citizen, I can't believe that one country gave the world... The greatest popular songs that uh, the British call light entertainment, which I know in about 35 or 40 years from now, it will become America's classical music. And uh, many of the songs were, those three artists that I just mentioned, composers, they would have Fred Astaire introduce all those songs. So a lot of times I call it the Fred Astaire song book rather than the great American. <laughs> But he, only, Fair enough. He, he originated all those great songs. Yeah. Well, Tony, of course, you are not the only one who loves these songs. In fact, last week we received an email uh, from a young Welsh couple uh, who are big fans of the songbook, of course, and are campaigning to raise its profile here in the UK. And Dan and Laura are here now. Come on in, guys. Give it a round of applause. Good to see you in your couple. So, Dan, Hi. just very quickly, just give us a bit of an idea of what you've been doing and how you've been campaigning to keep them alive. Absolutely. We've been going around to venues throughout the United Kingdom, um, including Trafalgar Square quite recently, performing to 10,000 people, primarily of a young audience base, just explaining how important the music is to us, yeah. and trying to take that to new and younger audiences. Yeah. We've Brilliant. been doing a project as well uh, with the uh, older people recording their memories, and we've been working with children yeah. in schools, doing workshops as well. Good. So well, we'll yeah. let you keep talking, I've yeah. got loads to talk about, but uh, we all know that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, uh, but the same can't be said for a pork pie. No, they certainly didn't stop our street doctor, Sarah Jarvis and Mark Porter, from heading to Melton Mowbray and inviting the local girls into their travelling clinic. Sarah will sort you out. Hey, uh, <laughs> but listen, we've run out of time. Honestly, yeah, I'm have. sure we could talk all night long. No, but no. a massive thank you to Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> See what is out when you can also catch him live at the London Palladium. Yeah, tickets are on sale now. Uh, on tomorrow's show, we're talking proms with Katie Darren. We will see you at 7 o'clock. Have a lovely evening. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>